<laughs> Get this the standard video. This is what you look like when you leave the unicorn locker. Just pop it in hell. Pop it in hell. Hey guys, I'm super excited to be back today with this video especially. Welcome back to the Unicorn Locker. Thank you for visiting. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know if you enjoy these kind of videos so I can be sure to do more of them. And my beautiful client here, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it. My beautiful client here is going out for her birthday dinner, so I'm filling in her eyebrows using the either the LA Girls eyebrow pencil or, that I, or the um, Anastasia Beverly Hills. I've been loving LA Girls eyebrow pencil lately and I'm just feathering them in. She has really nice brows, so I just wanna give her gentle hair-like strokes so they look super natural. And we're gonna go ahead and continue, wipe off her face and clean it with a makeup wipe. These are from TJ Maxx. Love that store for makeup shopping. And I'm gonna go in with the Tarte um, Shape Tape Concealer. I have, I think this is Rich Sand and Tan Sand. Both of these on my hand. And I'm gonna kind of blend the shades together. Sorry if you guys hear me swallowing here, I'm drinking a little bit of water. Um, I'm gonna blend these shades together and uh, use the deeper end of the blend that we made under her arch, or I'm sorry, like kind of closer to her nose. And then under her arch, we're gonna use the lighter shade. That's gonna lift her part, or that part of the brow, and then near the inner part of her nose, it's gonna deepen it and almost give it a contour. A natural contour without having to add anything extra right there. And I'm using a flat concealer brush. This one is from Sephora. I think it's the perfect concealer brush. It was discontinued a while ago, but I bought a whole bunch of them before they went out. And I like to kind of drag it in a flat motion because I feel like it gives me an easier application and also a smoother application. You guys will see that this is really the only time that I drag a product on the face is for the brows. Is it just me or is like watching somebody get their brows done super, super like aesthetically pleasing, almost like soothing? I don't know, I'm weird. Comment below if you feel like this is like soothing to watch. As we do this guys, we're also gonna go ahead and blend out with a fluffy eyeshadow brush. This one is just from an Amazon set that I got and I really, really enjoy it because it gives me the ability to give myself a very clean and even canvas. So if you look at her eyes under her brows, it's very flat looking with no definition, which was the goal aside from that deeper part under her brow. Very subtle though. So now we're gonna go ahead and go in with the Juvia's Place. Uh, what the heck palette is this? Hmm. Okay, so I actually just went and looked for that palette. Could not find it um, in my room here, but I'm gonna go ahead and list it below. I'm using the orange shade from it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys here in a second what the palette looks like. We're gonna go ahead and blend this orange shade um, right where, let's say she was looking straight at us, right to where we would not be able to see her eyelid where her eye would crease. So that's where you wanna start with the orange and take it right above where you would be able to see the orange if her eye were to crease. So essentially, I don't wanna take it any higher than right above her crease and setting it into her crease. We're packing this orange in because we want it to pack a punch, literally like just orange punch. And then this next color that we're gonna go ahead and go in with is really gonna make this whole look pop. She was wearing some neutral colors, white, olive, burnt orange, love that color story, especially for somebody's birthday, that's one of my favorites to do and I want to make sure to accentuate that but bring light to her face. So this is the palette. We're gonna go ahead and drop that hot magenta sort of pink there right in the crease as well, right below, right below that orange. So I kind of want the orange to still be the basis of everything. And then as we uh, blend it out, you see that the color starts to rise a little bit. And that's exactly what I'm doing with the brush. I'm allowing the bristles to kind of tap a little higher than the orange so I'm directly placing it below the orange and I'm moving my hand up slightly so the color will distribute right above it. And I wanna make sure that the pink is prominent but I don't wanna lose the orange. So you're gonna see here that we're going back in with the orange just to make sure that it comes back onto our lid and that we don't lose it.
And once we go ahead and place this orange all over both of the eyes, we're gonna blow it back out into the pink. So everything is blending flawlessly as we see here, yes. And now we're gonna go ahead and um, take our, what is this, P. Louise eyeshadow base. I believe the shade I have is number five. I want a deep shade as a concealer slash eyeshadow base. And I'm also working on an eyeshadow primer as well, very similar to this one, and I'm super excited for you guys to see it. But anywho, I'm gonna take this on this naked, um, naked brush from Urban Decay, from one of those naked palettes that I have, and go ahead and pat this on her lid. And this is gonna kinda give us like a creamsicle drip wink shade and a creamsicle like an orange shade on her lid to lighten it up and give us a base to stick this next shade on with. And please make sure that you guys pat these products in. You don't wanna swipe because when you swipe a product on top of another product, it really disturbs it. So we're gonna go ahead and take one of those brushes that we had from earlier, take a little bit more of um, that orange that was already on the brush and just tap it to blend out the concealer slash eyeshadow base on her lid. So we want this to blend right into that, that orange slash pinky sunset goodness that we got going on. We don't want it to be a cut crease. She doesn't do cut creases. She really loves a smoky eye. So we're gonna give her some smoke here. You see that I'm applying, uh, we're bringing all the smoke. <laughs> you see that I'm applying a little bit more of the eyeshadow base to her eye just to make sure that we give that yellow, that yellow from that Juvia's Place palette something to stick to and pop with. Popping, popping, boo. Get on and popping. Grisper, okay. Um, so now we're looking like a sunflower, sunflower with some glitter glue. And we're gonna take this nonstop Glitz Fix Glitter Glue from the Unicorn Locker Cosmetics, tap it on our hand or brush it on our hand from the wand. It's clear and it's a bomb clear gel that dries super quick. Take an angled fluffy brush. And as you guys see here, I'm kind of tapping this in the shape of her eye. So the brush is at an angle as it is. We're gonna take Wedding Day, custom mixed chunky glitz here, glitter. I'm showing you guys a close up, dope, super dope, bomb, bomb glitter. Extra fine particles without it or throughout it, plus some chunky pieces too to give you that pizzazz when you need it. So we're gonna dip our brush that we just dipped from our glue onto our lid and dip that into our glitter and then just tap it right onto her eye. Literally, that's it. Like you don't have to do anything else, we're gonna do it again. So watch it, just pick some up from the brush, the glue, pick the glue up from the brush, tap the glue on her eye or your eye, wherever you need to go. If you're doing this on a client, you're doing it on yourself, tap that glue in the angle that you want it to be looking like on your eye or on your skin, on your collarbone, on your shoulders, on your ankles, on your feet, your hands, at a festival, whatever, and to go ahead and tap it in. We're gonna take some orange, uh, this orange glitter that I have here is called Creamsicle Drip. Creamsicle Drip is everything. It's literally a fan fave and probably one of my best selling glitters. And tap that and kind of ombre that from wedding day out into the center of her eye. But I'm not taking it too far. I want it to be very precise, almost like a, like a half smoky eye. And you guys are gonna see here that I'm twisting the brush each time I use it on the each or on each eye. Make sure that you are angling the brush in the way that you want that glitter to be placed. You see, I twisted it again, I flipped it, because I wanna make sure that it's following in parallel to the contours of her eye. And I'm not going in with any extra product. I think I used an additional two swabs of glitter for her second eye, but I'm not going in with anything extra than that. I'm just taking whatever's on the brush and my hand. And we're gonna go ahead and highlight here with this Natasha Denona shadow from that palette. And I had a fluffy brush, as you guys see here, it was the same one I placed that yellow one with, but I saw it was making my glitter fall, so I changed. And speaking of glitter falling, I'm gonna show you guys a super easy hack here for long nails. So go ahead and take your favorite makeup wipe, pull one out, and wrap it around your finger in the way that you see right here. So I'm gonna run this back for you. Look here, tuck it around your finger like that and you'll be able to easily swipe away the glitter that falls on your face. However, there's not gonna be very much from this dope glitter glue from the Unicorn Locker Cosmetics. And I'm showing you guys here how you need to, or actually not how really, just the lashes that she's wearing, but also making a note of how you wanna take out the lashes from the pack. This lash applicator in my Mink Lash Tri Set is fire for this because you wanna pull the lashes by the root, 
Please don't pull your lashes by the hairs. You will rip the hairs out and they will not last, okay? Twist it like that, put your glue on, pop your lashes on, you're good to go. And so we're gonna go ahead and hydrate slash prime her face with the Too Faced um, Hangover Primer. This is a moisturizing primer. I like to use this for my oily girls because their skin is already producing enough natural oils. It doesn't need the extra hydration from the first aid moisture that I use on my dry clients. And I'm gonna go ahead and take her three foundation shades. Yes, three. So really you can only use, you can use one or two um, at home. And if you have two, one that's too dark for you and one that's too light, go ahead and use them both just like this. So um, you can use both of them to mix together and create your in-between shade. I'm gonna take the lightest shade and place it on the center of her face. So towards the inner corner of her eye, right in the very, very center of her nose and her eyebrows. So if you see there in the very center, there's a lighter shade than there is above her eyebrows. And that shade is also right below her eyes. And then going below that, we see that she has, um, you see that she has a medium tan shade or a medium brown shade that I'm using. And I'm using an even deeper shade along the perimeter of her face. This reason is so that way I can naturally bring back in the dimension that foundation does a good job taking away. So like if you guys think about it, foundation is really here to mute out any imperfection on your skin. It's not gonna bring back the things you love like your bomb cheekbones that she has or anything like that. So now I'm gonna take the Real Techniques Expert Face Brush and blend this bad boy out. If you guys see here, it's getting a little bit dry on her face because this is a very, very matte foundation. By the way, the Jouer Cream Foundation, something like that, um, it's very, very matte and I love using it for that reason on oily girls. So I'm gonna take my Evian facial water, fancy water, too expensive water spray and spritz it on her two different times. And it's gonna let me blend everything in flawlessly. And I'm also bouncing back over, bouncing to another Real Techniques brush. This is a super tiny um, perfecting, I wanna say this came in a set and it was for color correcting, but I don't use it for that. I just use it for blending out concealer in small places. So I use that under her eye, and I go back in with our foundation brush and blend out around her neck. Please make sure that you guys take your foundation down your neck. Don't have yourself out here looking like you have a mask on, whether your skin, mask off. Take your mask off, sis. Don't look like you have a mask on, whether your skin is super light or not, okay? It's not cute. Moving on, we're gonna go ahead and take our concealer again. We're going back in with our Tarte Shape Tape. Love it, love it, love it. And we're gonna take one of the shades that we mixed together, probably that mix that we had earlier, and we're gonna go ahead and bring that right under her eye. Now notice, guys, that it may look like I'm applying a lot, but please, please notice that I am evenly applying a generous amount. There's a difference between just applying a lot and evenly applying a generous amount. So as you see here, there really are no gaps in between the concealer that I'm using under her eye and I'm also being sure to paint it, literally paint it perfectly where I need to go above her forehead and between her brows, all that. Keep in mind that we said it's very important to make sure that the makeup is smooth. So part of the foundation or literally the way the foundation looks, the way the concealer looks, the way that it looks after the fact is part of the way you lay it down, much like you would lay the foundation of a house or a roof. You have to make sure that it's laid evenly or it's gonna start drying exactly where it was placed. And if there were places on your face where it should have been under the eye and it wasn't under the eye, you'll be able to see that because it's gonna start drying at different times if that makes sense. You need the entire layer to dry all at the same time to give you the full effect that the manufacturer of the product has, has tried to give you when they formulated it, i.e. Tarte. So we're also gonna go ahead and take that concealer blend that we have and also naturally add some contour back to her face too. We're gonna take that lighter shade right below her cheekbone and kind of carve it out. We're gonna take it in towards her mouth and use that small brush to blend out right by her mouth so there is no harsh line. And here I'm going in with Unicorn Locker Setting Powder. I'm super excited, I almost didn't say like the brand that it was, I was just gonna say setting powder. But I'm super excited to show you guys this. And I think I showed you in my last video, that was back in like November, gosh, way too long ago. But 2020 is a new year. So this setting powder is for deep ladies and I'm super excited for it because it kept her matte all night long. Her makeup lasted seven plus hours and I just, I live for it. 
and we're placing this along the sides of her nose specifically and pressing it in. Again, not dragging, but patting. Pat says, pat boo, pat, okay? And we're patting it in to make sure that it gives her an even coverage and I'm stamping it. And we're gonna go ahead and again stamp it in with that foundation brush. We're not adding any extra product. Please don't go in and add any product to your hand or your brush and go and try to do this. Just use a product that's already on there and the liquid that's on your brush is gonna kind of melt this powder into her face, giving that long, long last in wear. Guys, please notice how I am patting this in below her jawbone and her chin. You need to make sure this is completely blended. You don't wanna have anybody out here, yourself included, looking like you got on a mask, okay? Take that mask off. We're gonna go ahead and go back in with the eyebrow pencil just to make sure that her brows are fully touched up, especially after all that powder that we had going on. And we're contouring here with another Juvia's Place palette actually. This is the Warrior palette, I believe. I use the chocolate shade in there, the deepest shade to contour my brown skin, ladies, and it works beautifully. And then I'm mixing an additional shade, I think it was a brown in there, with another shade in there to make sure that um, the, the shade is actually gonna look pretty on her skin. And this is gonna be partly nose contour. I'm just tapping a deeper shade there, not to really slim her nose or anything like that, but just to make sure that she has definition back into her face. Highlighter from the Unicorn Locker coming soon. Super exciting, but it's beaming, look at it. Okay, anyway, so if you see this highlighter here, I'm super excited to show it to you guys when it drops. I have so many shades coming, but this is perfect, universal, and just bomb, bomb. Just look at it. I use it as an eyeshadow. I use it as um, a highlight for the Cupid's bow, right where I'm placing this on her lip to accentuate her lips, on my nose, brow bone, all that, all that. Oh, just look at her. She's so stunning. She's so beautiful, so beautiful. If you guys have followed me for a while now, you know I love me some blush, so I'm going back in with that little Natasha Denona palette that I got a couple years ago from Sephora and taking an e.l.f. brush, tapping that hot pink shadow just kind of onto her cheek just to liven up her skin a little bit. We're going to tap it around her face a little bit too. Just kind of make it look like she's been out in the sun. Got that natural glow, beautiful glow of a mother especially. Her baby, oh my gosh, her baby is to die for. Anyway, on to other important things. We're taking this, actually this is an eyeliner pencil that I got from Walgreens a while ago by Fergie and I feel like maybe Maybelline did a collab or L'Oreal or somebody. And I'm using this to line her lips and once I line her lips, I'm going to blend it out with a brush. And once we got it blended in with the brush, I'm gonna take one of the Viva Glam lipsticks from MAC, I'll have it listed in the description box and tap it lightly here on her lips. This color is quite pigmented, so I wanna make sure that it's not too strong. And then I'm gonna take a brush after I add a little bit more eyeliner to blend that out, or slash lip liner. We flexed it though. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a brush, blend those colors together on her lips, and then take another color. This is a very, very warm orange lip gloss from the Unicorn Locker, it's not released. This one's just a limited one that I made a long time ago. Take that and tap it on her lips. This color is bomb and it really warmed up her smile. That's just what I needed. So we're gonna go ahead and go in with our concealer. That concealer we used to shape her brows earlier and we wanna make sure that we shape under her lips to keep her lips clean, her lip line clean rather. And take that hot pink shade that we put on her lids, tap that under her eye and smoke out the lower lash line. Add a little bit of lower lash line mascara as well just to deepen the look of her eyes. Pop a yellow, a shiny yellow color from that Natasha Denona palette in the center corner, inner corner of her eyes, and she is gonna be good to go. We also spritzed a little bit of Urban Decay spray on here, uh, patted that setting spray in with the foundation brush too, and that's what gave us this fantastic look, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed, and I just, I love it, I was in love. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. This video took me two hours to edit. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Mwah.